Hello to you Mesh fans, Vaughan George here coming to you from London, UK, also known as The New Boy. I want to thank you guys for all making me feel so welcome as part of the Mesh community. And in case you missed it, um, I've just come off tour with Mesh. We played two shows in Germany uh, at Halle and Plag Noir. And um, it was, as you know, just recapping, it was a, uh, a last minute uh, thing I remember Rich calling me up on it was the 2nd of April uh, if it was the 1st of April I would have thought it was a April's fool, April Fool's joke but he called me up on the on the 2nd of uh, April and I sorry Rich I have to do the impersonation I was sitting here in my studio and I saw the phone and it said Rich Silberthorne and I went is this a pocket call or something and I went hello Rich and he went hello and I went he said Vaughan you fancy playing some keyboards for us <laughs> Sorry, Rich, I just had to do it. Love the accent. Um, so anyway, the rest is history. I went on tour with them uh, and it was an absolute blast. And as you guys know, I had very little time, you know, just over three weeks to learn all their songs. Now, the collaboration has been a good collaboration as far as I'm concerned because, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of the band and also uh, a fact that the music that they do is very much in the same genre as the music I release under my Vorti project. So it seemed like a, you know, a, a good fit. And I just want to really, in this video, just run through some of the uh, behind the scenes stuff without giving away too much, just because I did release a video a while ago and a lot of you were interested and I've been getting messages, you know, asking to, you know, do a little bit more. So this video is just going to be a quick insight and a look behind the scenes of what I as the keyboardist for one of the keyboardists for Mesh is going to be doing on stage. Um, and I'm going to keep this very, very straightforward and simplistic because I know that uh, there are obviously a lot of producers in this and all music enthusiasts in this community. But I know that most of you are not. You're just, you know, just fans. So I, I want to present this in a way that's kind of straightforward and not, not too geeky. So let's just roll and see how it goes, shall we? So off the bat, as we know, you know, Mesh has had different lineups over the years but of course Mesh is fundamentally Rich Silverthorne and Mark Hockings and the great thing about them I was not only honored you know to be asked to to come and play keyboards for them um, I was pleasantly surprised when they said oh join the band now and you know now I'm doing Bristol and London uh, and of course until they find someone better or if I get sacked but what was very uh, um, freeing but kind of challenging at the same time was the fact that they didn't really give me any restrictions. Um, so what I did was I I rehearsed and I recorded some of my rehearsal things and you know s sent the stuff to them. Uh, I guess what I'm saying is they didn't give me any sounds or they didn't tell me you need to play these parts or whatever. So it really was for me analyzing the backing tracks and obviously the backing tracks are obviously, um, you know, not, they don't sound like the finished records. Obviously they are the kind of like the, the, the foundational elements of the songs, but obviously there are a lot of things in the backing tracks that are not there because of course those are the parts which need to be played live. Um, so within that, Rich and Mark didn't give me any sort of um, direction as to, you know, you need to do this, you need to do this. And when I asked them, it was kind of like, no, we trust you kind of thing. So uh, whereas that was very liberating, it, it there is also a sense of pressure because, you you know, you, you want to do this properly. Um, as a session keyboardist for a band, um, this is not about me. This is their music. So I have to come in and interpret um, what they've done in the most respectful way. Um, but I, but of, of course, me wanting to bring my own kind of flavor to it. So um, in that way, I've been sampling a lot of sounds. I've been, you know, creating a lot of sounds, which I like. A lot of them derived from my Vorti sound palette. But as I say, because we're in the same kind of genre, um, it, it does really work. And uh, the rest is history, really, because following the Plague Noir and the, um, the Halle shows in Germany, they went really, really well. Um, and, and I really, really enjoyed myself, and hence I've been asked to come back and play Bristol and London. So what I did was when I was analyzing um, their music, as I say, I never had much time. Uh, I had about three weeks. So what I did was I obviously listened to the, you know, their CDs. I listened to them on Spotify when I went out walking, 
and I would walk around and just listen to what was being done. Then what I did was I was learning the words and, and at the same time I would be visualizing, okay, this part is being played and then I'd go listen to the backing tracks and go, okay, that part is missing from the backing track so that's obviously the part I must play and then I'd go and you know create the patches. When I say patch, a patch is a sound. That, that's what we producers refer to as a sound. I'd go and create the patches but also I was familiarizing myself with the lyrics. Now, um, I took the liberty of um, you know, doing some backing vocals as well because Mark said, Mark and Rich said, you know, do. They didn't tell me what not to do. They just said, go for it, do what you want to do. Sorry, Rich, I'm doing your impersonation again. <laughs> but uh, it was just, you know, it, we trust you, so to speak. And um, so, really, what what I brought to it now is, um, I'd like to think my my interpretation of this, um, at the same time being respectful to their sound. And also coming in with backing vocals now, we're now able to present essentially a three p like like three part harmony, because also as part of my you know learning the the songs, I would go back and watch some of their live footage, and I'd kind of see you know how they would perform live, and then then I would listen to it and go okay. Uh, you know what can I add to this without dominating? Uh, and at the same time, I've uh, I'm pleased to say we now have a three-part vocal harmony because you have, um, you know, obviously Mark the lead singer, Rich does a lot of the backing vocals, and then I had to decide, you know, where do I want to come in? And my main my main mission that I've given myself is everything I do must complement it. It's not about me. It must not dominate. It must complement. Anyway. I am the king of long monologues. But let me quickly just show you a little bit behind the scenes without going into too much detail what I've been up to. So obviously the German shows saw me having very little time, so I had to make things as functional and, and as straightforward for myself as possible. Um, I've had a bit more time now, so for those of you coming to see us in London and Bristol, you'll probably hear something a little bit more developed from me, that is, because um, you know, Rich, Sean and Mark have been doing it for a long time. And they are absolute pros. So my setup here is I'm doing a lot of the stuff on main stage. Main stage is, of course, um, you know, like qu quite a kind of industry standard way of doing it these days. I know, um, for instance, uh, David Brooks from uh, Gary Newman, who I've interviewed many times. This is his, his setup. And um, so the great thing about this is, is you can actually have... Um, you don't, you don't have to lug tons and tons of keyboards onto this stage. So I can just have my one controller keyboard and it is mapped. And what do we mean by mapped? Well, mapped means we have different sounds laid across different parts of the keyboard. So this is the keyboard I'm using. It's a 76 note keyboard and it is mapped. Now mapped means, let's just get that into focus. There we go. So you can see these little colored blocks over here. So what that means is that is one sound that is one sound. Every different color represents a different sound. Just understand that uh, every block is a separate section of sound. So if I was to play that sound over there, you can see that lights up over there. If I go to the middle there, there I've got the there I've got pads, and up there at the top I've got strings. Now the challenge with this is just really not only <laughs> remembering where you put it, but also uh, hopefully not playing the wrong songs uh, or the, 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 the wrong chords. So there's a lot of there's a lot of brain power being used here, and uh, I'm not the world's brightest man, but I try my best. Um, over here we have a Moog. This is one of my favorite synthesizers. Um, we all know the Moog. Even if you're not a producer, you probably know what a Moog is. These are incredibly fat analog sounding machines. And now, obviously, I love this machine, but I'm not going to take it on stage, you know, for practical reasons. When it comes to touring, you really want to only take on stage what you really need to. But what do you do if you want this lovely fat sound uh, on stage, but you don't want to take it? Well, that is when we use the sampler. And this, this, this used to be called the EXS24. Now, a sampler is really a... a, a Typically, they were hardware devices that would, you know, you would record sounds into them. And this is how great bands like Depeche Mode and stuff started. Of course, these days with the advent of technology, we now have the convenience of having the sampler in the form of software. So I do not need to take this keyboard on stage. I can just sample it in here. And that's indeed what I've done. 
So I've been doing a lot of tweaking on my, and I, I can promise you the, <laughs> the, sh the, the room is shaking here. This, is, this has got such a beautiful, deep, fat sound. So by recording, or say sampling those sounds into the EXS24, I now have, I'm now able to essentially bring this baby onto stage without physically having it here and by actually just triggering it on this keyboard. So in other words, once again, I've tweaked some sounds from here, which I've also run through nice, dirty, fat <laughs> um, compressors. And well, that's not a compressor, that's a, a preamp. And uh, that just adds grit and dirt to the sound, if you will. Um, because Mesh's sound is very, very sort of gritty and edgy, I'd like to keep in line with that. So that is all recorded into this, which is the EXS24. And I, c I can then play them on the keyboard. So here's a sound which I have created on this Moog. And I've mapped it over here. So it's recorded in here, and here it is. And this, of course, is from the uh, the song To Be Alive. Now, this isn't actually in the record. These are my interpretations of it. And then later on in the song, I have a pad sound up here. Uh, Mark will sing, and I will just double up his vocal. I think Rich, Rich sings along on this part as well. Um, it's, I'm in my own world. You're outside. It feels so imperfect. I wonder why your world isn't mine. It feels so peculiar to be alive. So that's the song To Be Alive. And as I say, I've got my, my Moog part there. And then later on in the song, we have the, the sort of outro. I've got these really sort of lush strings, which I've laid. Kind of like the, the strings from, I always love the strings from Adagio now, from uh, Apocalypse Now, just to be a little bit dramatic. So on the outro, we go. And that's, that is, of course, played at the end where, where they go, it feels so, it feels so. So that's really, in a nutshell, how, well, my part, I would be, you know, recording sounds here in the studio, loading them here into my sampler, and then triggering them live, mapping the keyboard, having different sounds across different parts of the keyboard, and then singing backing vocals as well. I'll just give you a few other examples here as well. Of course, I don't want to give away uh, too many spoilers. Um, so uh, really, um, I'm, what I'm playing you now is not necessarily what we're going to be playing in Bristol and London, but I think there are certain songs uh, from a mesh set that always have to be played. It's kind of like, for instance, uh, if you were the Rolling Stones, you could not do a, sh a show without playing Brown Sugar and I, I can get no satisfaction. But uh, just in no particular order, um, uh, let's have a look at uh, friends like these. Um, so you can see I've got a basically two layered sounds over there and you'll recognize that from here. I'm sure you'll recognize this. Friends like these of course and then later on in the song when it gets more dramatic and sort of builds up I play it with, with two hands and we double it up so it's And of course, a lot of these parts are not difficult to play, but it's because they're very, very iconic. You can't, you, you know, they, you do need to concentrate. I mean, it's. It's not difficult, but you have to play it right because if you hit the wrong note. Oh, you see, it just, ha it just, uh, you know, the, because of the nature of this kind of music, it's, it's not kind of the keyboard parts are not necessarily improvised on you know they are on some songs but on a song like this it you know it's it's very it particularly wants this ex these exact notes to be played and uh that's that is that sound is made up of uh it's a combination of like a, a string and a 
like a saw sound. It's, it's a detuned, it's essentially like, well, like what they call a real sort of hands in the air type Euro sound. Um, but also a lot of the sounds are tweaked in such a way that they um, complement the stuff. Um, sometimes I'm not only playing stuff that's not on the backing tracks. Sometimes some of the parts are on the backing tracks, uh, but sometimes I will play, I will double it up. So I'll add another sound to double up what's on the backing track, but then you need to change the attack and some of the, uh, uh, some of the frequencies and stuff just so that it, so that the sound meshes together. Yeah, I did that on purpose. So you want the sound to sound like it's blended and molded rather than just thrown on the top. So there's a lot of geekiness involved here. A similar type of sound used on a different song, which is kind of a similar approach, is from the song Circles, and I'm sure you'll recognize this. And then of course later on, when it gets more dramatic, we do double hands. Absolutely love that song. It's so That is something I've always liked about Mesh's music, is, is that they're able to present their songs in a way where it's kind of it, it, it can be some of the songs like the song circles they can be really poppy but they still have an edge to them and that's quite difficult because i mean even like bands like erasure who i love you know they can kind of lean to a really kind of cheesy side sometimes uh, and i say that with respect because i love erasure but um certainly mesh uh, you know with a song like circles and some of the you know a lot of their songs can be, can be quite dark and edgy but circles is really a great pop song uh but it's because of the way it's been produced and the types of sounds they've used that it doesn't sound cheesy. It just sounds edgy and great. So I, I love that song. From This Height, another great sort of mesh classic, kind of real sort of like trancey type sound. As you can see, there's uh, two layered sounds over there. I've taken like a, also kind of like a Euro type pad sound, uh, which has been a tweaked, uh, tweaked. And then the, the sound below it has just a little bit more attack, just so it can sort of punch through. And on the top there, I've got a, a string sound, uh, which is which is the um, um, that's sort of during the uh, the bridge. But then, of course, the main part, which you'll probably recognise, is of course. Um, I remember playing this live to a, to an audience at Plug Noir in front of thousands of people, and there's just this there's this feeling of power. You know, you hit this, you you do that, and it's like the floor shakes. But then there's also this realization of, oh my God, you better concentrate. Um, so it's as follows. Call me a fanboy, but it gives me goosebumps. Absolutely love this song. Okay, we'll do a few more examples. Uh, I don't want to sp spill the guts and give too much away. Here's Born to Lie. Um, you got this really fat bass sound um, at the bottom here, and which which I've sampled in from my Moog. So believe me, when you hit that key, it just makes the room shake. And indeed, I, indeed, I plan to shake the stage with that sound. Uh, and then. And then on the choruses, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got an early morning voice, so don't judge me too harshly. Um, on the chorus, I will jump to this part. Uh, Mark sings his lead part. He goes, Why is it that you were born to lie? It's a game to you. Why is it that you're just borderline insane? So that's what Mark sings. And then I sing a harmony. Um, on, on a lot of the songs, I tend to sing a third above him, or I, I usually tend to sing uh, ab above him in register if I am singing with him. Uh, in this particular song, I sing uh, a, a few notes below him. I don't know if it's a third or whatever, but um, my part is... Why is it that you were born to lie? Why is it that you're just borderline? And with Mark going... Why is it that you were born to lie? My part. Why is it that you were born to lie? 
so that harmony I think works quite well um, let me just look at it as I say I don't want to give too much away but this is really really exciting uh, the fixer oh, I love this uh, you've got the main melodic part which is you can call the fixer um, so you've got the main part there up there I've got some more string parts there which are played in the verses uh, and of course um, at the end uh, of this I do my little solo uh, and the solo uh, well is not is not it's not it's not note for note the same it, it varies every time because it's kind of improvised um, with a song like the fixer um, there are key elements that need to be played the same every time and one of those key elements are this this main part here And then of course when it gets to the chorus you can call the fixer then I play this part so those parts are always sort of like played the same because they are sort of key parts at the end uh, typically with the fixer um, I would do my solo part uh, and that's kind of And, and the great thing about solo, doing a solo, is you can kind of, um, you know, do it on the fly, and you can, you know, change the uh, the syncopation and stuff how you feel. Uh, but anyway, we don't want to get too solo solo inflected. It reminds me of those uh, drum solos they used to do in the eighties. Yeah, we don't want to go there. But uh, there are certain songs where I have a little bit more freedom to kind of rock out. Last one standing. up here I have another sound which we play in the verses which is um Just Leave Us Alone is uh, an amazing amazing song uh, if you come to one of the shows or indeed if you've been to um, one of the mess shows um, the projections are really really effective I think really really good and uh Actually, when I watched the, um, the 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 projections of this, because I, you know, obviously with the backing tracks, I got the projections as well. And uh, this is a very very emotional video, and it, it did well me up in a way. Uh, on this song, um, I'm not going to play you everything, but when it gets to the the chorus, um, you know, it's got that real sort of kind of like trancey part. There's a lot going on, so. Um, I play this part and this. The, the the part I'm playing is kind of like a sequence part, so it's um. It kind of complements the main sequence part, which is on the backing track, but it doesn't dominate. Um, so you, so out of, so I, I guess I'm kind of playing it out of context now. But um, anyway, this is what I play. And then later on, it goes higher. As you can see, I've uh, messed up there. You'll be all right on the night, but uh, it's a lot of fun. These are great, great songs. Let's just do a, a couple of more. Ah, Runway. So Runway, we have... And this fat, deep saw sound once again coming from my Moog over there. I just can't take for granted another Mesh classic. Um, once again, I've got different sounds uh, at different parts of the keyboard. Um, including this I mean that this, this just shakes the floor and then of course on the choruses I just play these uh, sort of um, chords to lift it and that's a combination between like a saw pad uh, I've got a Mellotron there and something else anyway do I get too geeky too late for that now um, and of course on that chorus Mark is doing um, I just can't take for granted all the things I did before and on this chorus I will sing uh, a third and then eventually an octave so I do something like this 
I just can't take for granted all the things I did before. You get the idea. The traps we made. I said this to Mark and Rich uh, once, and I just said, you guys should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just for this song alone. I mean, as far as... We don't call it a ballad. What's great about the song is it's it's a ballad, but if you listen to the backing track, the backing track is really, really aggressive. And contrasts are always very, very important in art or in, in film or theatre or anything, is where you have something because typically a song like this um would probably be performed in a you know as a piano ballad or something like that. But the, the brilliance of this is you have this really tender, beautiful song, but the the music is really aggressive and edgy. Um so uh but at the same time, there are beautiful emotional elements to it as well. So, I mean, this is just a jaw-droppingly great song. And when I'm talking to people about Mesh, this is one of the songs I always um, introduce them to. Um, once again, quite a few different parts laid across the keyboard. Uh, but sort of like the main part on the chorus, I have like a, uh, once again, I've got my kind of adagio strings as i say i love that's i love the adagio for strings from apocalypse now so i've got a little bit of that i've laid laid with a uh, like a pad sound also with a uh, with a sort of a detuned choir sound just to and the detuned choir sound is a little bit a little bit out of uh not 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 out of tune but it's, it's detuned just to give it a bit of um sometimes you want to uh, you don't want all your sounds to be 100% in tune. You want them to be slightly off, and that gives them a fatter sound and also creates emotional dissonance, if that makes any sense. Um, so, of course, on the chorus here... I'd be playing that, and then Mark would be doing his part, which is... Every time we fall into the traps we've made for ourselves... He'd be doing that, and then I would be singing the higher register, which is every time we fall into the tracks we've made. And you know, I, I feel that that register, along with Mark's, works well. Anyway, he was happy, Rich was happy, the boys were happy, and uh, hence the reason I'm on board for two more shows. Do I look excited? I'm very excited, and you know. Uh, for those of you who know me from my YouTube channel, um, I've been doing that YouTube channel for about four years, and you know I do get a lot of you know positive feedback from people, and s some of that flattering feedback, uh, I, I've had people asking me to join bands with them and stuff, and I often turn I often turn things down like that because I just don't have the time, and you know when Rich asked me to join you know Mesh for those two shows. <sighs> My logical mind at the time said, "No, don't do it." You know, because I just, I, I'm just busy, and it, it was a lot. It was a lot to take on, and you know, also I've just had a, a little baby girl as well. So, but it was, it was the f my gut just said, "Do it," you know, because I really, I, you know, I love the band, I love their music, and you know, the rest is history. I am, um, I'm so, I feel so grateful and privileged to be a part, uh, to be on board and a part of this. Well, that's it, uh, my friends. I hope that wasn't too um, long and lengthy. Um, as I say, I could go into a lot more detail, um, but I think that's enough for now. Um, I'd like to ask you, Mesh fans, a favor on behalf of the band Mesh. If you could please share one of your favorite Mesh songs on your Facebook page, on your Facebook page, your personal Facebook page. All you need to do is, you know, just 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 drop the song there and say, "Hi guys, you know, just check out this band called Mesh. I've been following them for years." Whatever you want to say, I don't want to tell you what to say, and I don't want to sound pushy. All I'm saying is, is that certainly since I've you know joined joined the band, I've been sharing their music with my fans because I have you know fans of of my music and they're fans of my channel. And a lot of people that I've shared the music with have said things like, oh, we know Mesh, they're a great band. There are other people who have said, oh, we've heard of Mesh, but we've never listened to it, thank you. There are a lot of other people who've gone, oh, I've never heard of this before, this is amazing, who are they? They're great. Mesh always get to compared to Depeche Mode. Sorry, Mesh, I get compared to Depeche Mode a lot. It's very difficult if you're a male artist doing electronic music not to be compared to Depeche Mode, but I think it's kind of flattering. Uh, a lot of people have said, and sorry to piss you off, Depeche Mode, a lot of people have said um, they 
they they glad mesh is around because Depeche Mode aren't that good anymore. Not what I said. The comments are out there. Um, it's not a competition. I don't want to cause a rivalry. Uh, all I'm asking you is, if you're a Mesh fan, I'd be really grateful on behalf of the boys if we could, if you could just please share your favorite Mesh song on your Facebook or your Instagram, because I really think we this band is underrated, and I think the more people we can make aware of this great band it could really help and um, if you could do that for us I'd be very grateful and so would the band we'll leave it there once again Mesh fans thank you so much for your support leave your comments in the description below let us know which show you're coming to I know a lot of you are coming to Bristol and to London hell I know a lot of people who are actually flying over from Germany for, for both shows so on behalf of Rich Mark Sean and I thank you so much for your support and thank you for making me, the new boy, feel so welcome. I really look forward to meeting you all at the next gig. Bristol and London. Be safe, lots of love, and I'll see you there. Adios. Adios.